Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on my channel and if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe this channel. In today's session on climatology, we are going to learn about rainfall, its various types and characteristics. So before we go ahead, please like and subscribe and do share the videos with others as well. So now, after we have discussed about the clouds and its various types and family in the last session, let's understand the forms of precipitation, specifically rainfall and its distribution and its various types in this session. So let's understand the first important point that is, precipitation is the process where what happens? The local air becomes saturated. So remember, the saturation happens with water vapor and it starts to do what? Downpour and that is what we know as rainfall. So as it no longer can maintain the water vapor in the gaseous form, that is when the condensation starts happening as we know. So there are various forms of precipitation, right? Liquid, freezing, frozen, all these stages of different kinds of precipitation are there. So what is rainfall here? Rainfall is basically what? The precipitation in the form of liquid. That is what we understand as rainfall. So furthermore, what we see is that for a rainfall, the drop size is also important. And what is the size? 0.5 millimeter or more. So if it is less than 0.5 millimeter, it is not considered in the rain. Right. So that is important to remember. And it is also called virage. Another word when raindrops evaporate before reaching the earth while passing through dry air. So suppose here is the cloud. Right. In between there is a dry air and this is a land. So if raindrops from the cloud disappear or evaporate just before reaching the ground itself, then what it is called? Virage. So this is important to understand. Now let's elaborate further on the rainfall more. So one important term here is drizzle. So many times we use rainfall when it is slightly slow or less and we say it is drizzling. So what is drizzle all about? Drizzle is basically light rainfall with drop size being less than 0.5 millimeters. So remember a rainfall this threshold value 0.5 millimeter the drop size has to be there. If it is less than that then it is drizzling. So when evaporation occurs before reaching the ground that time when we read about virage it's part of the drizzling only right. So when the temperature is lower than 0 degree C then what happens? Precipitation takes place in the form of remember snow because it is freezing temperature. So snowfall it is called then right and sleet is something. So sleet is what? It is frozen raindrops. Now remember when it is frozen while it is falling down and refrozen material is now actually melted into snow water. So this is what we say is sleet right? So sleet fall or snowfall or drizzling or rainfall all these are various types and then one of the most important phenomena that keeps happening these days we see that in the monsoon season as well and in various other seasons as well that is hailstones. So especially in pre-monsoon showers and convectional rainfall we find lots of hailstones. So what is this hailstone? Sometimes these drops of rain after being released by the cloud become solidified into small rounded solid pieces of ice which reaches the surface of the earth in the form of ice crystals that is what we say as the hailstones. So remember this is important that hailstones is not sleet. Sleet is simply just frozen raindrops which when reaches ground it melts but remember when this frozen water droplets reaches ground as grains then it is not sleet then it is hailstone. That is the difference, right? So we have to remember this particular difference. So now what we have in picture here is rainfall drop size 0.5 millimeter and above virage raindrops evaporate before reaching the ground. Drizzle is light rainfall drop size less than 0.5 millimeter. Mist is something evaporation occurs before reaching the ground. The ground leading to foggy weather conditions. So that is misty condition. Remember that is important and snowfall is fine flakes of snow. That is important at 0 degree C and then what is sleet frozen raindrops and refrozen melted snow. So mixture of snow and rain somewhat. This is part of blizzards as we have learned about it. So sleet is part of the blizzards many times and then we have the hailstone which is rounded pellets like structure with size more than 5 millimeter to even 50 millimeters. Right. So that is important in terms of various categories of this particular precipitation that we see here and in detail we are going to discuss about the rainfall. So 
Going by the NCERT, remember the basics. What are the various types of rainfall? These three types as you may remember your school days. So one is called convectional rainfall. The other is called orographic rainfall or relief rainfall or topographic rainfall. And the third one is called cyclonic or frontal rainfall. So in the sessions before this, we have already talked about this convectional process, orographic process, which is relief driven or topography driven process and also the cyclonic process that is frontal formation process process as well. So remember these are the three types of processes on the basis of which there is this origin of rainfall. So this is why it is categorized into three types. So convectional rainfall, orographic rainfall and the cyclonic rainfall. So remember this is COC right. So that is important to remember as types of rainfall. Now let's elaborate further more. So what is a convectional rainfall? Let's understand this in detail. The air on being heated becomes light and rises up. Remember hot air rises up this concept and what happens in convectional process it creates a current. It basically means hot air rises up and cool air comes down and then there is this circulation. So this is called convectional current and remember as it rises and it expands and loses heat consequently what happens to this air? Condensation takes place and cumulus clouds are formed. That is what is part of the convectional rainfall, remember. So this process releases one important thing that we have already discussed in detail in the latent heat. Remember latent heat of condensation in atmospheric stability and instability chapter also we learned about it. So this latent heat is released at this particular process which further heats the air and forces the air to go further up, right? So hot air rises up, it picks up moisture at a given point which is called dew point where saturation occurs there is a cloud formation and then rainfall happens but what happens here remember the adiabatic process the internal reheat that is latent heat is released and this air further rises more up right so this is what is said to be this latent heat's role that it leads to further rise of the air right and convectional precipitation is heavy in nature very heavy but of short duration remember it is heavy but time duration is little it is short so highly localized it means it is not having a vast expanse it is localized to a particular parcel of air or a particular area and is associated with what minimum amount of cloudiness remember it's not necessary that the entire sky or the horizon is full of clouds even a smaller convectional cloud can rain at a particular location. So that is important to understand and it occurs mainly during summer season. Extremely heating process happens here and is common over equatorial doldrums in Congo Basin, Amazon Basin, islands of Southeast Asia. So largely you see this convectional rainfall as part of the equatorial zone, right? If you go by the temperature belts of the world. So equatorial belt or torrid zone that we say is actually having most of this convectional rainfall in the world. Then what we look here is the Next one that is called orographic. The oro word itself is for mountains. Remember orogenic process. So oro rainfall or orographic rainfall or if you say relief rainfall or for that matter many places it is also said topographic rainfall right because their topography becomes important right. So when saturated air mass comes across a mountain. So what happens it is forced to ascend and it rises right. So it expands because of the fall in pressure. Remember there is a fall in pressure as we go on the height, right? So what happens? The temperature also falls and moisture is condensed. Therefore what happens? Condensation happens and rainfall happens on this slope which is also called windward slope. Remember this windward slope is that slope from where the wind rises up and starts raining because of this cloud formation. Right. So this is called windward slope and just the opposite side. Remember what happened? This is called rain shadow region because there is shadow here. There is no rain here. Right. This is dry air which descends down. Right. So this is the leeward side. So windward side and leeward side. This is part of this topographic rainfall or orographic rainfall that is important. So where does this kind of rainfall happen? Patagonia desert in Argentina, eastern slopes of the western Ghats in India. Remember the monsoon comes here or the sea breeze comes here carrying moisture and it rains here. So what you see here is almost 600 centimeter rainfall. But on the other side of the western Ghats, right, what you have? even 60 to 70 centimeter rainfall. So there is extreme difference of moisture conditions. So the best example that you can see for this is Mahabaleshwar is situated in Western Ghats receives 600 centimeter rainfall. Whereas on the other side Pune lying in the rain shadow area has only 70 centimeter rainfall. 
So this is very interesting that because of this barrier, because of this oro that is mountain or the rise in topography or relief, there is this kind of contrast between the windward slope and the leeward slope. Right. So this is interesting. Now the third one that we know is called cyclonic rainfall. So it is talking about the formation of a cyclone. So in the lectures to come, we are going to talk about cyclones in details. But for here, let's understand what is this cyclone and what is its role in rainfall. So cyclonic rainfall is basically what? Convectional rainfall on a large scale. So remember a general convection is happening on a smaller localized scale. But when it happens on a larger scale, so then it is called a cyclone. So best example is the tropical cyclone. Remember in the tropics what happens? The precipitation happens in this particular tropical cyclone of convectional nature, right? And temperate cyclone is another example where frontal activity happens. So remember in temperate zone, cold wind mixing with the warm wind. So there is a mixing happening and front formation happening and cloud formation along the front. We have discussed in the le previous lectures in the air fronts as well and we have understood about these pressure belts and changes in the temperature also leads to this kind of cyclonic rainfall. So this is important to understand that this kind of cyclone which is created, remember this leads to cloud formation. So you have cumulonimbus clouds, larger areas covered and heavy rainfall that is called cyclonic rainfall. So these are the types of rainfall that we know. Next one that we have already discussed in detail is the monsoonal rainfall. So you know what happens here is the seasonal reversal of wind system and it brings rainfall throughout the India in the month of June and July. So this type of precipitation is characterized by what? Seasonality. So seasonal reversal of the winds is what is important here. So in summer season, it has a different direction of wind. It brings rain to the landward side. In winter, it only rains in the certain parts in the southern belt of India and the winds flow in the opposite direction. So what you see, there is this contrast and seasonality involved when we talk about monsoon. So it is also part of the periodic wind system as we have learned in the early lectures as well. So this is another type of rainfall that we know. Another classification of rainfall is based on the intensity of rainfall. Now this is interesting. How intense is the rain? It means in given time duration, how much is the rain? So, for example, one is light rainfall. When we say it is light rainfall, basically means what? The rate of the rain. It means how much rain is falling in a given area per unit time. This is varying in terms of measurement that is in millimeters. So, remember, if we place a container here, a rain gauge that we say, remember, this is called rain gauge. So if you place this, it has marks in millimeters. So how much millimeter is rainfall in this is actually the weather parameter. So this is what we understand if it is light rain, how much will be the deposition 0 to 2.5 millimeters in this rain gauge. Then moderate rain, it will range from 2.6 millimeters to 7.6 millimeters. So that will be moderate. But if it is heavy rain, it means it is beyond 7.6. So 7.6 mm of rainfall is the threshold between the moderate and the heavy rainfall. If it is more than 7.6 millimeters rainfall, then it is supposed to be heavy. That is important to understand. Now let's come to the last part of this session, which is about the distribution of rainfall. Now for distribution of rainfall, if we remember the temperature bells and pressure bells, we can automatically correlate it. Why? Because remember for rainfall, temperature and pressure is one of the major factors that we have learned, right? So if you understand the temperature and pressure bells of the world, you understand what kind of rainfall is happening where, right? So between the latitudes 35 and 40 degree north and south of equator, this is what you say is the subtropical belt right? What happens? The rain is heavier on the eastern coasts and goes on decreasing towards the west. So if you see east to west in this particular zone, that is 30 to 45 degree, right? So there what happens? The rainfall is heavier on the eastern side and as you go west side, remember what happens? It is decreasing. So we have most of this major deserts on the western margins only because eastern part in the subtropics is actually having more rainfall, west is dry. So this is why you see most of the world's major deserts in the western margins of these continents only in this latitude. That is interesting here, right? And the reasons for this, we already know that wind subsides, right? It does not have moisture. So in subtropical high pressure belt, there is a problem that when wind reaches the ground level, it is heated up, right? So this is a lot of pressure changes with temperature changes. So these changes keeps happening along with the side. Also, there is some impact of what you say is the ocean currents along the sides. So this is also related to this question, which is asked that why Western margins are actually having these 
desertic condition. So this is reason now you know. But between 45 and 65 degree north and south of equator what happens? So now we are talking about this particular belt that is about the polar front area that we say right. So that is largely part of the subpolar low pressure belt. So remember what happens here between 45 and 65 it is the zone for westerlies right. So tropics is the zone for trade winds and this particular zone is the range for westerlies. So what happens? The rainfall is first received on where? If it is westerly on the western margins obviously because this westerly will carry the moisture from the ocean to this western margins obviously so that is where the rainfall is received maximum in this particular zone which is just opposite of what is happening in the tropics or subtropics right so this is interesting because of these westerlies right this is the direction here so these areas receive more rainfall here right and these areas interior receive less rainfall so you find these less rainfall Gobi desert and other areas where you have lesser rainfall so this is the one kind of distribution where we are talking about west to east and east to west right across the latitudes so this is one way of looking at the world distribution of rainfall now let's look further more now in general if we talk about the general pattern as we proceed from equator towards the pole from equator we are going towards the respective poles what happens the rainfall goes decreasing steadily. It means as you go on decreasing the temperature, it means moisture is not carried upward much. So rainfall is less. So this is what happens. This is the most important belt of maximum rainfall because of the storied zone factor, convectional rainfall factor, remember? So this zone has the maximum concentration of rainfall, that is equatorial zone. And as you go towards pole, there is decrease in the levels of rainfall. So the coastal areas of the world receive greater amounts of rainfall and you know why? Because of this sea breeze bringing moisture, rising up and creating clouds and rainfall, right? So this is important. So interior of the continents have less rainfall, coastal areas have more rainfall and we know the differential heating and cooling of land and ocean. So that is the process that is responsible. So rainfall is more over oceans and the obvious reason is why these vast oceans because temperature is already there and moisture is a permanent source that is ocean is having a perennial source of moisture. So it keeps raining there in especially in the warm and wet tropics or humid tropics that we say right so that is important as part of world distribution of rainfall and lastly wherever there is a mountain remember now third type which we learn is this mountain situation running parallel to the coast so which are those areas remember the rockies andes all these places so what happens here the rain is greater on the coastal plain it means on the other side where there is a coastal plain this side you have maximum rainfall right but what happens on the other side remember it is a complete desertic condition so this is one of the most important area where you can identify that there is less rain this is the leeward side so desertic condition is there so this is important it is called rain shadow area and rainfall varies almost you know many folds so if this is having 500 centimeter rainfall on coastal area it will only have 50 centimeter so this is that fold of rainfall that we see so in india also on western ghats you see on the western ghats you have 600 centimeter rainfall but on the leeward side of this we have almost 60 to 70 centimeter rainfall only so this is a contrast because of this mountain factor and we know this kind of rainfall it is called orographic rainfall so that was about the world distribution of rainfall across latitudes across longitudes from east to west from west to east across the continents interior and also the coastal region of world distribution of rainfall so now when we have learned about the rainfall its formation its classification and various types so in the sessions to come we are going to learn about cyclones its various types and characteristics so don't go anywhere keep watching stay tuned and stay safe